Hello, welcome to this session, which is about data exploration using Redis Graph in 3D environments like VR. My name is Brian Washanga, but the streets call me Washix, and I'll be your presenter for the next few minutes. A brief background about myself, I'm a computer scientist uh, with eight years experience in the field. I am very passionate about design and computer graphics, and this started um, when I was a young boy around 12 years old when my dad came home with his first uh, PC that ran that had uh, Windows 95 and I just fell in love with uh, Microsoft Paint so after finalizing uh, my undergrad I dived into uh, the UX design space and uh, in my third year in the industry I read an article on about how uh, data science is the new oil and I just immersed myself into that world uh, to, and it's been an amazing journey of just learning new concepts in the last five years. And now I'm in a place where I'm, I'm comfortable to implement uh, data science in the UX design process. Uh, this passion led me to opening my own design studio that creates uh, XR applications um, that are powered by Creative AI. And our flagship product is a 3D e-commerce platform uh, that targets the creative industry. Some of the brands that we work with, uh, Snapchat, uh, actually we we designed the uh, the first lens to try on clothes remote uh, virtually using their app. And uh, we also have, we are also a verified publisher at Microsoft. And what we do is uh, we've mastered their design guides and uh, we create products that run in their marketplace. So before we dive into the tech, let's have a brief background on, on, uh, on what we are going to be doing. So we've all lived through the pandemic, uh, which was caused by a viral respiratory disease from the SARS family. This, this disease was first identified in uh, China in two, February 2003. And uh, the, it only, at the time, it only spread to four countries. Uh, some of the key um, statistics that we grabbed from the WHO website is uh, the most patients are age, who fall ill with this disease are aged between 25 and 70 years old. There are few suspected cases on children who are less than 15 years old. And um, the fatality rate among uh, people who are infected with this disease is around 3%. So why are we talking about COVID? We, we, we are going to use the COD-19 data set in this uh, presentation. And um, this data set was created in 2016 by this list of uh, organizations. And uh, it was a directive by the White House. And it's basically an aggregation of around 50,000 scholarly articles that were published around COVID, and it has been downloaded a bunch of times, so it shows uh, its 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 usefulness in this. Some of the key research it is being used to answer some key research questions around the COVID, and uh, on the right we have a, a sample of the questions. So what's the problem here that we are trying to solve? We want to build a search for for medical researchers to use as with the code 19 data set as the source of truth so we believe that information exploration should be spatial preferably in vr and this is following the ideology from the philosopher who lived in the 16th century called uh, giulio camillo who designed the memory palace or the memory theater and on the top right here is uh, the original the original design of the palace and basically he, he studied human memory and uh, he deduced that people retain information more efficiently when information is is arranged in a manner that uh, information that is related to each other is closer to each it's, it's closer and uh, he he usually said that if you enter the memory palace you'll come out knowing everything so we are using this analogy because uh, 
VR is kind of like a spatial environment and we believe that uh, you can uh, synthesize more information when you view things from a spatial environment. The other issue is confirmation bias, which is basically a big, um, people have a tendency of searching for information uh, that confirms their own personal beliefs and you want to avoid that uh, because for example when I'm searching for around topics uh, related to data science or design I want to look on, at the diversity of the opinion rather than the similarity of cluster words right and uh, also uh, the misinformation bit is is a bit um, we have a lot of fake news around so here we can see the museum space design which borrows uh, a lot of uh, uh, concepts from the memory palace because when you go visit a museum uh, artifacts are usually arranged in a manner that if you move from one artifact to the next they are kind of like related so it it helps you to synthesize information more so why did we why did we pick redis for this uh, surprisingly redis is a great tool for for data science and engineering and the the, the key key reason is because it offers uh, in memory storage so there is no need to move data from the storage disk to memory right so everything is happening in memory uh, redis graph all offers a, a scalable graph database um, we have redis streams that uh, allows us to manage data in channels and have the pub sub uh, paradigm redis gears allows us to operate on data processing efficiently in memory because the data is already in memory so let's look at the nlp pipeline for for this um, we'll start on the far left here uh, we, we take the code 19 dataset and we extract and pass it into uh, favorable formats for us to use so once we we, we do this this these records are being published into a ready stream into one channel so we have a, a set of gears we use redis gears to 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 do the pre-processing for 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 the documents and the first the first uh, part is language detection so gear subscribe to the input uh, where the the past documents are in the where the past documents are and uh, what we do is we we perform language detection we are interested in articles written in english and we discover that uh, the code 19 data set has a lot uh, has articles written in various languages like french and etc so once you filter out articles uh, written in english we publish to another channel where another redis gear is subscribing uh, to it and uh, it picks on the records from the previous process and what it does it, it is it splits it into paragraphs so it splits the article into paragraphs and what this is it, it helps in um, we use we use we use uh, the spacey uh, library uh, in python to uh, to do this once we finish the the splitting of parag into paragraphs what we do is we publish the results into a different channel where we have a, a third process for spell checking that subscribe there to pick on the results so here we just do self spell checking using a, a, a library called a sim spell which is also a python library so all these are redis gears that a subscribing and publishing to various channels in the ready stream so before we head on to the match let's let's look at up here so uh, we, we need a corpus in order to to analyze these records so we use the UMLS table um, as a, that has a it is basically a database of medical concepts we read that table and use it a, a corpus and we pass the the the, that data into an algorithm called uh, the aho Korasic algorithm and what the aho Korasic algorithm does is uh, it is a dictionary matching algorithm and it builds an automata which is uh, like a file a 30 mb file it outputs a 30 mb file 
which is being passed now to the matcher and uh, the output of the spell checking which is basically like tokens word tokens sorry so what the matcher does is it takes uh, the concepts from the automata and it matches it to the tokens from 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 the pre-processing uh, pipeline and the output this happens in parallel in order to speed up the process and uh, the output of this is a is a knowledge graph uh, which is saved in the redis graph where the nodes are the concepts and the relationship between the nodes is uh, the article right so once once we've saved the knowledge graph in redis graph uh, we built uh, an api using flask that receive receives a query string from the front end and queries the redis graph and responds back with the, a set of nodes and edges so all this is implemented using python and i'd like to give a shout out to alex mikalev and Ga gavid dimelo who uh, did a, a lot of heavy lifting in this thank you guys so let's move on to the front end let's look at the ux architecture and the tools used to create the front end so we have the graph database here that is populated with our knowledge graph and uh, the flask api receives a query string and it queries the knowledge graph and responds back with uh, a set of nodes and edges where the nodes are the medical concepts and the edges are the articles right so we use uh, we use the angular framework to manage uh, all the libraries and uh, the functionality in the front end and uh, once once we do a rest call to the flask api with the query string and we get a response with the set of nodes and edges these are being saved in the app state which we use ngrx and this we we, we use this app state because of uh, reactive programming and i'll show you in a bit why that is important so we have a, a force directed graph library that we use for visualizing the the graph the knowledge graph so it it is linked to the app state and it reads data from the app state and every time the app state changes it it renders a new graph right so that's that's one of the benefits of having reactive programming so once we have once we've once we've created the the the, the force directed graph of the knowledge graph uh, we want to render it in 3d and we use the uh, 3 js as our rendering engine and the reason for this is because it provides an abstraction to two important browser based apis that we are going to use for this the first one being webgl that allows us to render 3d graphics in the browser and uh, the second one being webxr api which provides an uh, abs ab which provides access to um uh div xr uh, devices so let's say like uh, vr headsets um ar headsets and uh, mobile ar through ar kit and ar core and it offers like um uh, ability to to code uh, various functionalities in this uh, form various form factors so once once the the graph is being rendered by the 3d engine there are two currently there are two possible ways to access the graph the first one is the uh, desktop 3d version uh, we prefer you use the desktop and not mobile though it works on mobile because the mobile screen is a bit too small and uh, the second one is a vr session where you can uh, now with your vr headset or your google cardboard uh, you can now explore the data uh, you can explore the graph now in a, a vr environment so let's let's look at uh, a demo for this sorry yeah so the demo is hosted at the pattern.digital and uh right now um, fix this ux but uh, i'll grab a sample uh question research question and if you go to the kaggle page I'll, I'll share the link in a few um you and go to the tasks section 
you will find a, a list of uh, tasks that have questions, research questions around COVID-19. So we just picked one and the question is how does temperature and humidity affect the transmission of 2019 and So let's hit search. Yeah, so as we wait for the response, yeah, so here's the response, which we can see is like, a, like some form of a ball. So if we zoom in, you'll actually see uh, like a huge ball of words over here with some lines. So the lines show they are the edges that connect between two nodes, and the nodes are the medical concepts, right? And since the articles were published in various years, we have a time slider here, so you can uh, query... You can move the slider between to find the year that you that you want to know more about and explore data more. So we let's let's look at the 1970, which is a bit interesting. Uh, there were articles published in 1970 around COVID. Quite interesting. So let's zoom in. So you can see here the center of the the force directed graph is temperature. And we have all these nodes, which are medical concepts that are related to temperature in 1970, that was published in 1970, right? So let's look at, uh, so if you hover, if you hover over one line, you'll see that it shows like some connection. So once you click on an edge, we are able to now view more uh, about that relationship and we, where the, the source node is temperature and the target node is dot doses. So the relationship here is an article, remember, right? Where and the nodes are medical concepts, right? So the title of the article is Rat Coronavirus, a prevalent naturally occurring pneumotropic pneumotropic virus of rats. So this is a bit weird uh, to discover that there's something to do with coronavirus and rats in 1970. And you can actually see the sentence where this 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 relationship comes from right and you have links here where you can click and actually see the more about the medical concept from the umls right so you can so all this uh you can you can view it in vr but unfortunately i'm not so sure i'm not i don't know how to record a vr session for this but if you have a vr headset please um, visit the pattern digital and then uh, try it out. So yeah, so the one one key thing to note here is uh, the reactive programming I was talking about. So as you can see here, like if I move the slider from 1970 to 1996, you can see we have a new result, a new search result, right? So that form of reactive programming is important to build complex UI. And if you click here, if you if you click on um, this relationship between transmission and path, you can find a, a feeble pneumonia in infants, which is uh, another article, a title for another article. And this is the sentence where the relationship is being found. So we are able to 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 build complex uh, interactions using reactive programming and since ngrx is a it's like a redux uh, type of uh, state manager we can come here and uh, just i want to show you uh, the responses that come from the server uh, so here from search results you can see the links which is a list of which which is basically edges so these are our edges yes we have the nodes, which are the medical concepts. So the links are the relationship for articles. Yeah. And each of them has a rank, right? So that's 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 the, the short demo that I have right now. Let's go back to the presentation. So what's next? We want to integrate a BAT uh, model, which is a state-of-the-art uh, AI for NLP and 
for building question and answer sum and summaries. Uh, we want to integrate that into the NLP pipeline. And uh, in the front end, we want to add uh, support uh, voice support, especially in the VR session. Uh, since it's uh, such uh, platform, we want uh, you ca we can't let you start typing in stuff in the VR environment. So we want you to use uh, uh, your voice to search for stuff, and through speech synthesis, we'll convert your voice to actually the search term and query the server. And uh, also want to add positional audio support. And what this means is, uh, since it's a knowledge graph. And uh, all the nodes, uh, we, we have their positions in 3D space. So based on what you're searching for, we can actually activate like voice coming from a node, uh, from the position of a node. So think of it like heading into a library and uh, you want to look for uh, books around uh, maybe interactive interaction design. And once you enter the library, um and go into the column for design a book calls you i'm like hey here here's here's what you're looking for so that's that's a kind of interaction that we are hoping to to achieve and uh we also want to add other types of visualization uh like have uh, 3d um models like uh one use case that we are currently working on right now is uh, uh for bone anatomy uh, medical researchers have uh, who, who focus around uh, bone anatomy have challenges in uh, sharing their findings. So we want to have like a skeleton where if you click a bone, it it queries the, the, the server and brings uh, research data around that bone. So here are some more resources. Uh, you can check out the project documentation. Uh, the GitHub repo is uh, the is available also because the project is open source and also feel free to make changes and create a PR and we'll be happy to work with you to merge your changes into the project. There's also uh, the link to the cargo uh, challenge where you can download the code 19 dataset and have access to the research questions that uh, the medical research community are currently um, tackling. And also there's a link to the live demo. So thank you so much for bearing with me. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to two guys, the two scientists, uh, Gavi DiMello and uh, Alex Mikalev. Uh, make sure to check out Alex's uh, uh, session uh, around uh, building the NLP pipeline, which is a deep dive into that. And I'll also like to thank Redis for the opportunity to share our story. Thanks. <music>